Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Tony Khan held his normally scheduled pre-pay-per-view media call yesterday. Our own Josh Nason covers these every time out for the site. He also posts the audio, which is this time about an hour long, which you can find through the front page as well. Asked if he would consider doing a roster split. Khan said it's not a bad thought, and he's considered it. He's thinking about roster management, but it's too early to speculate on things given their new TV deal with WBD and what's to come. On the WB deal, WBD deal, he said both sides were very happy with what they ultimately worked out. Didn't have much in the way of details when it came to the whens and hows of the pay-per-view component working on Max, but he's confident it will be a financial positive for fans. During his answer, he did say that pay-per-views will be part of the streaming library on Max in addition to their regular TV shows, which he had not confirmed before. Asked about the recent question about whether WBD has equity in AEW. Khan said it was a fair question, but will not get into ownership structure. Sticking with his line that he has 100% of voting stock and the vast majority of shares. Asked about the future of ROH TV and if he's shopping it around Khan. As Josh says, in a bit of a sprawling answer... Did not really directly answer and eventually stated that there are other deals to be done, like their international TV market that have to be made. He is very passionate about ROH and thinks there will be great opportunities for the brand going forward. And then asked about Daniel Garcia staying in AEW. Khan said he understands why he would take time off and consider everything before making a decision. He was happy to retain him in AEW and has a lot of belief in him and his future. I'll just note one thing about the earlier point about WBD having an equity stake in AEW with Kevin Kelly and the Tate Twins suing AEW. Uh, it was revealed that WBD does not have at least a 10% stake. They had to actually state the holders, the stakeholders in the company over 10%. WBD was not listed, so it is less than 10% that WBD does own. Asked about Daniel Garcia, the deal about him saying he understands why he would take time off and consider everything before making a decision. Tom, you know, I, I didn't get into this with Brian on the show, but it's like, I don't know. My wrestling brain was leaking out of my ear by seeing MJF be put on the shelf by Daniel Garcia and then not doing anything with Daniel. And I understand... And it's great that Tony Khan gave him time to make a decision. I, I just, it still seems very odd to me that you would go ahead and do something like that. And Brian's excuses, well, they've had two K champions that haven't been under contract. Okay. <laughs> but still, I mean, isn't that taking a chance? And aren't you really asking for that to bite you one day, uh, you know, by doing something like that? And frankly, I guess, I don't want to say being too good of a guy, but like, Again, allowing them the opportunity to do this after something had played out on TV. You know, Mike, not not to redirect kind of your question, I guess, mm -hmm. but to me, the bigger issue, because we have seen people be on WWE TV and then move on to other companies. People aren't always just outwardly buried. They're not always shelved. But the bigger issue to me is Daniel Garcia came back on Wednesday, and, and what did he do? Cut a uh, passionate promo in front of a small crowd in Spokane. Okay, like I know MJF is on the shelf. I know he's not there, so you don't need to slot him back in with MJF. But I mentioned it before in this show. Daniel Garcia at one point was a part of this entire BCC storyline. You know, I don't know that sending him out there and just having him cut this promo was the most effective use of having him return. People were wondering, has he signed, re-signed with AEW? Is he on, does he have the same algorithm that Shawn Michaels has on social media? And is he going to take the bait and go to NXT? What's going to happen? And instead, he just came back and kind of the suspense was gone. 
Yeah, and I know somebody's saying, well, you know, hey, he came back and he gave a speech and now you can start something up with him next week. But did you maximize that? And maybe he hadn't signed before last week. I would think that he would have. But like you were in Pittsburgh last week. That's not close to Buffalo, but it's a lot closer to Buffalo than Spokane is. So I think you lost impact on one, a bigger crowd, obviously, but two, just something where they would be more of his people there, more fired up. It's more of his territory than him going and cutting that promo. And you're right. You're right about that. Why was he not out there, you know, being challenged by somebody to set something up? They probably should have done that. And I just, the whole thing around it is just really odd to me. Again, you know, you laid out MJF, the biggest star in the company, when he's there, and you give him the kiss of death, you, you hit him and he's gone. So how do you follow that up? If you're not going to follow it up the next week and he's off TV, it just didn't make any sense. And yeah, I don't think they had the impact that it could have had by bringing him back either last week in Pittsburgh or maybe just waiting and going, oof, you know, are we going to get the aesthetic that we want? Are we going to get that crowd behind him that we want? If we're in Spokane and we haven't sold a lot of tickets, it may have been better to wait on this, maybe for the pay-per-view even on Sunday, that Daniel mm. Garcia just comes out of the crowd and makes his announcement, you know, and, and does it in a little bit of a different way. I don't know. Maybe that could have worked a little bit better. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's just me, but I'm not really trusting in this wheeler Yuta character. You know what I mean? And there's there would be enough intrigue and enough drama that you could bring Daniel Garcia back into this storyline, where do you go after laying out MJF? What is he going to do? Go back down to the mid card? While he didn't win that match, an easy way to elevate him would be to put him in this storyline. You could have the the situations where he's there. You don't know if he's going to back up uh, Brian. You don't know if he's going to get into a fight with Yuta. And there could be twists and turns. You know, maybe he ends up siding with Moxley and that crew, or maybe he ends up going with Daniel Bryan like we thought was going to happen years ago. You know, it's not as if this stuff hasn't already been set up either. It's there to be used. And I just think maybe they are going to go in that direction. I don't know what TK is going to do. I didn't spend as much time on the Death Valley driver video review message boards as he did. So we don't have the exact same booking brain. But if you could slot him back into this, you could have just kept him off on Wednesday. You know, I just think there's better uses, like you said, uh, of Daniel Garcia coming back and announcing that he is staying where the best wrestle. And wanting championship gold is a good thing. But in that company, as he even pointed out, there's a lot of people with it. You know, to me, a Jack Perry, Daniel Garcia feud for a lot of reasons seems like it makes sense to me. I don't know where they're going after Shibata. But it seems like, you know, Jack Perry and Daniel Garcia would be a good feud. Maybe they're going to lead into that direction. That that might be good. But also, too, you're trying to establish, again, I don't know what their world title picture is going to be. But once you lay out MJF, it's like you should kind of be up there on the food chain. And I'm not sure if the TNT title is right now, although they're, again, trying to get that over more. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.